Hey, my name is Edward. And I'm Simon. And we two are from Germany and have a YouTube channel called Leckerwissen. And it's about physics. We met Jörg from the Slingshot channel. And he gave us the following task. Let's go back to the dark medieval ages, where there was a beautiful castle upon a high hill. In front of the castle, in the valley, there was an angry mob. And they were enraged because the duke and his castle was oppressing the peasants. So they decided to pull out their slingshots and shoot the castle. But they were asking themselves, at which angle should they choose to shoot? But how can we solve this problem? How does the ball travel through the air? As we know from anything that we just throw up, everything that goes up must come down. So we have two movements, one forward movement here in blue and one up and down movement in yellow. Those two movements combined result in the green curve that we call parabolic arc. But in real life things are a little bit more complicated. The stone faces an obstacle on its way and that is air. So the real trajectory will be the purple one. But what exactly is air resistance? As the stone flies, it pushes aside all the molecules that are in the air. The bigger the ball, the more molecules are pushed aside as more material surface is in contact with the air. The bigger the attack surface A is, the higher will be the air resistance. But wait, there is more. Our angry mob can choose of a variety of different projectiles. For example... Potatoes! Or broccoli. And all of them have different shapes here in green. The CW value now describes the influence of the shape on the air resistance. In our case, they are shooting round balls and they have a CW value of 0.45. But what about speed? A potato flying twice as fast as another potato faces four times the air resistance. This means that the air resistance grows proportionally to the square of the velocity. Thus we can calculate the air resistance if we know the values of the attack surface, the form factor and the velocity. But now, let's get back to the original question. The peasants want to know at which angle they have to shoot their slingshots in order to damage the castle. We suppose that all the stones thrown are of the same weight, are thrown at the same speed and that they are the same size. The first group of peasants wants to damage the wall of the castle which is 10 meters high. By trial and error, they find out exactly what we have calculated. They have to shoot at angles in between 38 degrees and 45 degrees in order to hit the wall of the castle. A second group of angry attackers have a diabolical master plan. They want to shoot directly into the 30 meter long caster yard. In order to do this, they have to shoot over the caster wall. Therefore, they are choosing very high angles in between 61 and 69 degrees. Hey Jörg, Simon and I have calculated and these are our results. Number one, you could choose an angle between 38 and 45 degrees to launch your projectile directly into the castle wall. And your second option is to choose an angle in between 61 and 69 degrees to launch above the castle wall and hit the castle within its ground. And now it's up to you. Show us if we have calculated correctly. Bye bye. Oh, and one last thing. In the unfortunate case that you don't have a castle to shoot at, we calculated the distances. So you can just choose an angle, shoot your slingshot off and measure the distance to see if our calculations are correct. And on a second note, the speed of a projectile will not change so much. So at the point of impact, it still travels at 44 meters per second. And sorry for all your empirical system nerds, but the metric system is the one to go. In Germany, we do it right. 
So, Jörg, show me it features. All right, Jörg, you can hit the, uh, the mower from the burg. The wall. The wall. You can hit the wall from the castle. No. Oh, horrible aim. You have two possibilities. Number possibilities. Let's do it again. Rewind! <laughs>